Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. Well, good evening. I should be saying it's a Monday night, but it's not. It's a Wednesday. Um, it's not VT Talk. Um, it is Tin Your Tip with myself, Gary Dibley, and the ever capable mod master that is Mark. You can obviously see I am a little bit pissed off today, to say the slightest. Um, today, coming up in the show, we have some stuff that we did. Um, and uh, <laughs> we have some uh, some 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 stuff um, coming from uh, Super Seven, uh, which is which is quite good. Um, I'm a little bit, yeah, you know, the custards. Uh, that, that's all. Yeah, I uh, yeah. Let me one second. Mm. Don't normally do this. I am seriously and utterly, completely and utterly, and everything else that goes with it, a little bit pissed off tonight. Um, I've been looking uh, today at what has been going on. Um, obviously, we had over 200 people travel to Brussels to uh, to a, a nice, um, peaceful protest about the uh, decision that was being made. Um, was the correct decision made? Um, are there some people who deserve to have an atty of choice rammed up their receiving end? Um, yes, I firmly do believe so. What the vote was, I do not know. I've been playing catch up all day. Um, I work from eight until five. And I sort of pitched in where I could, but I was picking up comments on, on the forum, uh, the forums all over the place as they were going. And, and to start off with, it was sort of like 57 has been rejected and everybody was going, yay, 57 has been rejected. And then 49 has, has, has been canned as well. And, and that was sort of like, OK, it's not that bad. And then 58 was rejected and, and the faces went down. What those numbers are, I do not have a clue. That is why I don't do this show on a Wednesday night. That is why Mr. Dawn does it, and he is the man who is, is fully in the know. To me, they're numbers. Um, but I know it affects me. Um, 57 was carried, and I think that was the ultimate kick in the booty hacks, um, to be honest with you. Uh, I think, effectively, that makes them medicinal products. Um, but there is, and, and Dave Dawn will be in and will be telling you um not tomorrow because he's in the houses of um parliament and uh i hope he's carrying something with him um but no, i never said that it's 019 i swear i never said that um i meant he's going to carry an e-cig like that to show them exactly what one is and ram it up their armpits because that's where we're carrying them um yeah i know that there there are people out there that say it can't it's not that bad it's not but it, it's a real kick in the nuts and i've had people coming up to me today people that i work with people that know all about what i do saying yeah there we go that's fucked you mate oh shit sorry i shouldn't have said that um but i did um this is gonna go ever so slightly wrong anyway um we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later on um but obviously you can tell the sort of mood i'm in um the, the whole schedule this week has, has sort of gone pear-shaped um, obviously with what's been going on um, I hope to God that the guys that have gone all the way over to Brussels are coming back and they are having um, you know some sort I, I, I'd hate to feel that they're coming back with, with their faces on the floor in the train you know th there's got to be some hope somewhere for us and uh, I think this is and I'm sure this message will be sort of portrayed a lot coming you know going in the future that this is the time where we need to really 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 and you know pull our socks up and dig in and really try and kick that yeah the, the yes um anyway let me uh, let me sort of uh move on ever so slightly on on a positive note and and you know for for the people that that are trying to screw me from behind while I'm bending over doing up my socks um, we are trying to do something good here um, as as well as you know you you thinking we're loonies um, 
we're, we're doing a little bit for children in need, if some of you Muppets are watching. And and so far, the kind vapors of the world have donated a, ton, you know, a sum, as of tonight, of £1,063.41 for children who are in need of some sort of assistance. If that doesn't tell you something about the people that we have in this community, well, I might have to show you the, mm, the, the, some fingers. Um, but it does. It shows you a lot about the people that we have in this community. And I, I would like to, to say a few thank yous to Ego Maniac, um, to Media Youth, to Just Poo. Love that name. Um, uh, Ewan, 2004, Mully1971, who purchased a drip tip of the day this week. Um, also, I would like to thank Todd and a lot of his Facebook followers. Um, you, they've raised a huge amount by, by raffling and, and donating stuff. And, and this is a point, you know, there are, although I started the Children in Need page um, in the name of Vapors of the World, it doesn't necessarily mean to, you know, that, that is something I do. Um, anybody can start an event and donate to that page. The idea is that that is a, a communal page, that the amount that we generate portrays, you know, what we can achieve. Um, much the same as, as what we've done today. And something like that could be, I don't know if it could be used as a tool to shove up someone's backside when they say, you know, well, I'm going to have to watch my P's and Q's tonight because I am well and truly pissed off. Um, yes. So tonight we do actually have some modding. Uh, and um, I, I was very lazy this weekend and um, I did absolutely nothing. It's steamy hot here. I'm absolutely boiling sat in the shed and it's the last place I want to be when my head is on fire. Um, not only because of my day job, but because of the shit that's been going on all around the EU today. Um, so yeah, it's probably a different view on a Dibley for, for some of you, but Dibley is pissed. Um, completely and utterly, not pissed, but pissed off. I've it's time to kick ass. It really, really is. And I don't know how much time we've got, but I'm looking forward to, to the feedback from, from Dave, um, possibly on Wednesday or Thursday, just to let us know what we have to do, because we really need to spam the forums, spam everybody, tweet it, do what the bloody hell we have to do and kick some serious ass. Um, with all that said, I'm, I'm going to go into our first little video. Um, this is a modding show. Um, you know, it is a modding show, uh, believe it or not. Um, if you're joining us for the first time tonight, um, with the most viewers we've ever had, um, you're meeting Dibley, who's, who's normally quite happy and, and you know, innuendos and all that stuff. But tonight, it, it's a pissed off Dibley. And um, I'm sure I'm going to get told off for saying pissed off too many times but if I just add one more time I am pissed off then I can't get in any more trouble than I already was for saying I'm pissed off. Um, enough of the rant um, I am I am going to play our first little video um, which is from Mark and obviously this week we've we've been hammered to be honest with you um, and uh, and it was a pretty much a uh, what the hell do we do type thing and this is what we come up with. So here we go into our first little video from Mark. Well, it's finally happened. I knew it would happen eventually. Uh, I'm all out of ideas. Uh, this week I haven't got a clue what I want to mod, so... I've got ideas for the future, um, but I'm waiting on parts for a couple of different ideas. But until then, I thought I'll take this time to answer a couple of questions from the forum. And, well, once on the forum and ones. Something that's been floating about from a lot of people seem to be having the same problem. And I think I know what's going on. I could be wrong. But if it is what's going on, uh, this should be handy in explanation for you. And I'm going to start with, is the VAMO? This obviously isn't a VAMO, this is the connector from a VAMO. That's about the only bit I've got left of it at the moment. If I just... I'll zoom in there and a lot of the problems people have been having, at least the questions I've been seeing, is this thing as you can see here. The centre pin is loose and it's shorting out and they said that the o-ring has been coming off. 
if I just pop this out. There is a little bit of free wire with the Ramo, so you may well be able to get it out without having to take the whole thing apart. And what they've been saying is the o ring has come off and it's wiggling around, shorting it. As you can see, there's what appears to be an o ring there, which is just split. That isn't actually an o ring. Now, people may be commenting that they may have just confused between an o ring and a grommet. But if they're seeing something like that, I can see, I'll see why they're calling it an o ring. But what it actually is, is one of those, not getting camera, which is a grommet. It's the top part of that which is sheared up here because the pins got crushed at some point and that's all they've got left. And this bit at the bottom is the actual insulating part that holds it all in place. And that's gone somewhere down inside the van presumably. And that's the bit that needs to be replaced. So you can get one of these, so it'll probably look more grey or white in colour from the base of an old atomizer or cardamizer that you're not using anymore. Always having to keep them safe. If you pull out the centre pin from the base of the cardamizer, you'll find a grommet that's more than adequate for the job. You can get that off there. And then what all you need to do is with the wire still connected, if you can pull the pin out just far enough, it'll probably only come out about this far. You can just slide the grommet back over, making sure that the wider end is at the top, the thin end goes down the bottom. It should be quite an easy process to just ease the grommet over the top of the connector and then you want to ease it down further so it's no longer on there so it'll drop down into the hole and very carefully with a screwdriver you can ease this back into place but you might find if you just position your connector back over the top of the grommet like so you may well be able to screw it back into place using a device. So you pop that in with a bit of pressure and a bit of luck. It may well just screw back into place. It hasn't there, but as you'll see, if you left it, it'll short out. With a bit of careful prodding and poking, you will eventually get it back into place. It's not going to work like that for me. And of course, you've got to be very careful not to split it again when you're working. And in fact, a pair of fine tweezers might be easier to use. It's never quite so easy to do this when you've got the wire in the way, of course. tube for the van wall. and then I've got somewhere to stand it. Just 
push the connector back down in place. And if you've got everything right, you know, work in Vamo again. Right, that's quite enough for the first one. Back with another one shortly. Right, we're back again for another week, and believe it or not, it is Wednesday. Um, it is six o'clock, and I've got three hours before the uh, before the live show. Um, I was taking my rest um, this week just a little bit too far. Um, I was planning on doing something live for you tonight. However, for some reason, the mood I'm in, I think that may have been a mistake. Um, this is sort of something live. Uh, I've had a lot of questions about polishing my tip, um, probably as a result from a few videos a little while ago. So I have a freshly turned tip on the uh, on the end there, sort of like a little uh, bottle shape. I don't know what shape it is, but it has the end um, that is bell shaped. Uh, shaped, shaped, shaped. I'm not recording this again. Tough. I'm going with it. Um, one thing I have done. Or what I have got this week, uh, I put on my my quick change um, doofy dobber. So basically, um, whereas before on my on my tool post, that's the one. Whereas before on the tool post on the lathe, I had this scenario. Let's keep unbolting these and uh, putting a new tool in, lining it up, and all of that sort of stuff. Um, I've now got one that that takes this type of bit, um, and I've got three of these attachments for my most commonly used um, tools turning tools and effectively it is one bolt and that just slides on the uh, on the lathe and it's ready set and ready to go uh, literally one iron key slides off dump new one on job done much quicker it took me I mean I was I was yeah I, when I first put them on um, drove me potty I was absolutely just shocking actually getting it lined up um, I know it may be uh, easy to some people but I, I'm still a novice when it comes to sort of setting up this stuff um, what am I going to have a look at uh, tonight for you a lot of people who are, are into strangely enough I've never seen so many tips in my life as, as I have the past few weeks since we put our, um, our video up um, what have I got I've got a, a tip that has been turned um, that as you can see is scored to buggery and the reason that that is is sort of scored to buggery is is because of the way that I'm found a sort of a way to work, and I'm using quite heavy grade paper to, to knock out some of the shapes that, that I can't get with the um, with the metal lathe. So what we're going to do is is very very quickly uh, look at polishing uh, one of these up um, just to see how we can we can get it going. Uh, what I'm going to do that's probably going to be I'm going to try and do it in in a few minutes so I'll pop away I'll come back into and we'll take a look at polishing this try and get it done in, in, in one hit in, in a few minutes see you in a bit and there we go we're back in the room once again and um, my mood has not changed in the slightest um, I normally find it relaxing to come home and turn a tip um, but tonight it was frantic and you see the score marks in that one and and that was anger that that was that wasn't pleasurable that was done out of bleeding anger I can tell you and the, the thing that gets me is when I was a smoker I was allowed to you know almost it was almost recognizable that you you were allowed to go out for a smoke break um, now I vape that's not but okay if you want to make it a medical product I need 20 minutes every hour to go out and use my my medicine that, that that I need to use. So do you know what I mean? It's nearly said the F word again. It is stupid. Um, I really don't, and I, I I don't understand what these people are thinking. I really would like to get one of them in the shed for an hour, and that lump of wood, that bloody lump of wood, might come into use. Um, it. Yeah, I need to take an air break. Uh, I'll pop back after this if I can find the ads. Now the ads have hidden from me, so uh, pop back after this. There we go. Bye. Liberty Flight sponsors Ten Year Tip with Gary Dibley. Thank you. 
again and i know a lot of people in in the chat are saying come on uh, well i've had one doug yes i understand chin up carry on and uh, that is typical british thing you know chin up and and carry on but i i really i, I feel passionate about this i i we've got to do something and and realistically if, if you if you look at there was a massive attendance today 200 people from all over the place um, you sort of think if there was 3,000 there, you know, would the impact have been greater? I don't know. But is is that, uh, you know, because uh, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, we, we, you know, we need to chin up and carry on and all that sort of stuff. But I think we need to be prepped up for bout two. And we need to be prepped up a lot more for, for bout two. And, and people need to understand that, that we have to get involved and we have to get out there and we have to do something now is the time um it's like uh, someone said in 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 chat that if you know in 2016 continue to we'll be blowing up in, in telesix products there you go you put a smile on my face that's great yeah i mean i'm sure we can and i will try my damn hardest if that is the case to make one go bloody bang um even if i blow the shed up i don't care <laughs> it will happen i'll tell you that i'll put 750 million volts through the thing um but there we go so yeah it's it's not all negative i don't believe but i think what it is for a lot of us is a kick up the arse that we need to you know take this seriously it is happening um it's happening now and uh, you know it will continue to happen there, there's not much we can do about it other than rally together and and crack on and that is the word i believe we rally together we crack on and and we kick them yeah um with all that said um <laughs> i've been requesting videos for a long time uh for some yeah from some of our viewers and uh, and this has come through um super seven doug phillips i believe oh, i'm sorry it's been a long day um has, has sent this to us and i believe there's a couple of the little mods that, that we've done or or let uh, inspired from from tinny tip so probably the first one i've done of, of one of our viewers um enjoy hello um right i've been making some things um the first thing very very simple to make um just a piece of wood um, this was actually supposed to be for banisters that I was supposed to put up about 15 years ago, but still haven't got around to doing. Anyway, very, very simple. Um, using a router, I've just rounded off the edges, um, drilled a few holes, um, 22 mil holes, and uh, now I can just uh, stand my atties in them. Um, planning on putting a um, couple of legs on that and then varnish it and everything, but um, nice, quick, simple thing to do. And it's useful. Um, I've also been working on something else. Now I've been working on this for ages, but because the weather's been so bad, I haven't been able to finish it because I don't have a workshop. So everything has to be done outside my patio. So I have a um, battery holder, a uh, piece of wood. This is uh, MDF. 
Um, yes, I did slip with the router. Yeah, that's supposed to be a nice straight groove. A um, few holes and a few channels cut out underneath. I've also got an ATI connector and a little switch. Now, <laughs> I was going to do this Gary Gidley style and now zoom in and uh, watch me oops, with the old soldering iron, but I'll be quite honest, I don't know what's up with me today, but my soldering is terrible. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this, I'm going to finish put it together and I'll show you what it's like afterwards. Okay. So, I finished it. <laughs> Gary Dibley, you've got no, nothing to worry about me printing your show, honestly. Right, so, here it is. Um, got a battery on it. Uh, we've got our switch. Um, Atti connector. The back, there you go. Um, I've actually hot glued all these wires in. Now, I have got um, a pad that I'm gonna fix to this. It's a pad for routers, actually. So you can put stuff on them um, and it doesn't slip around. So that's what I'm going to do with this. Um, not the prettiest of things. Um, why is this silver? Why is the wall silver? I've got tons of silver paint. <laughs> um, but I'm consider thinking of this as a, like a, a Mark I. Um, see if I use it. And if I do make use of it, then uh, I'll make a better one. Anyway, let's give it a test. Okay, so um, I've got my Atti that I've screwed on here battery let's give it a go push the button yeah hey and it works great stuff okay um this well that i put in here uh, which isn't straight uh, the idea with that was just to put a screwdriver in um or a wick or something just so it, it doesn't roll off um unscrew the atty um, I have actually left this proud, and the reason is that it was just a thought that if um, an atomizer um, gets stuck on there, I can at least put a pair of pliers or something and unscrew it off or something. But that's it. So there we go. Um, you can see I've got a little dripper on here that I'm just building at the moment. It makes it just so much easier, especially with these tiny, if I zoom in here. You know, these tiny little screws trying to get the, the wire around and everything. So uh, hopefully it should uh, be a useful thing to have. Anyway, thanks for watching. Cheers. See you soon. Right next on the list is a question from a member of our own forum, the VTTV forum. That was Steve37UK. I was asking about these uh, VV boards, in particular the little potentiometer that controls the voltage and he says this screw is incredibly annoying, is there any way you could replace it with some sort of control knob of some description and I believe the answer would be yes so I'm going to attempt to do that now so basically it's a potentiometer so there's three connections there's the either side and the centre one which is the white which goes across and it's the difference between the uh, positions that controls the voltage I'm not entirely certain but I believe this to be a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer but it's incredibly hard to tell when it's connected to the board so I'm guessing it's 10k uh, I'm going to try and replace it with this which is a standard potentiometer much larger than that but it's just a single turn and I've added a nice easy control to the end of it and I've pre-wired it with three wires going to a connector which you can't see there that's a simple connector block and here is the other side of it and this should fit these holes perfectly because it tends to be a standard size so all I'm going to have to do Let's try and desolder this and remove it. I think I can get a... Yes, I can. I'll be able to get a screwdriver in there to hold it. 
this principle would be exactly the same whether you've got the dis model with a display on or just the standard one, which you're probably more familiar with. I haven't even used this one because I've got this to hand basically. And uh, when I'm doing some testing later, you'll be able to see the results better. So, I'll just turn the tip back off. I'm going to have to try and get heat to all three pins at once, preferably. It does get rather hot when you're working on it like this. So it could be easier if I just grab a pair of pliers, I think. It's not a small pair. Heating across the pins. And they will eventually just come away. Try not to touch the sword again like I just did while you're doing it. And there you have the old potentiometer. Should remove most of the excess solder that was there. So I just need to pop this through. It's a little bit fiddly, but it might be easier for you just to put wires straight through these holes. But for testing purposes. Oh, I might have to replace the potentiometer with different sized ones to get the desired results. So a connector makes it life a lot easier. Well, I've got the connector attached eventually. Uh, not the best job I've ever done of it, but it'll work. So this will just slot in here and using this gives me the advantage that if that happens to be when I turn it clockwise it might be turning the volume de eh, volume voltage down and that might be turning the voltage up in which case all you would do would be to disconnect it and swap it 180 degrees and then that should reverse the action what we will see in a moment. So, next job, I'm going to have to attach a battery pack to this so I can see what's happening now. Because if I'm honest, I haven't got a clue what will actually happen when I connect this up, as I've got no idea whether it's the same size as this and whether, sorry, the same size as this and whether it will work the same way with a different value potentiometer or not. I guess we're going to find out later. Right, so I've moistened my vocal cords. Um, 
we're still in the same position that we were with the tip. I'm going to start first of all with a uh, quite a uh, you know a heavy grit. I'm going to start working with with a 1500 grit, um, then an 1800, and then I'm going to drop down to to the the lower levels of the sort of the, the threes, fours, sixes, and and twelves. So I've got six stages that I'm running through with this. So starting off with a 1500, then the 1800, then a three six, and a four, then a six, and a 1200. If we didn't catch that. Replay it and that slow it down. Um, so to start off with on the 1500, I, I'm going to put the RPM at round about sort of quite high. <laughs> So I'm just going to moisten that up to start with and I've got the 1500 grit and I'm just massaging my end. Massage, giving it a little gentle massage. This is probably the, the grit that I work the, the most with because this is the one that's going to take out a lot of those imperfections. Rolling that around. I always tend to stroke the bell a few times just to gauge an idea of how soft that is. Switching over to the 1800 grit. Again, just rolling that around. to the uh, 3,600 grit. Stepping up to the 4,000 grit. Going with a 6,000 grit. And finally the 12,000 grit. With a 12,000 grit, I like to give it a little bit of a, a wrap down and a little rub on down that way. So that would be my sort of first polish. Now 
I can see there are a couple of little marks still left in there but I will have to work those out or I would work those out on my uh, if you like on my second polish but in terms of you know a a good first go just working through the grits really quickly then I'll make it you know you can see once it's, you give it that quick polish you can see a couple of little blemishes that I know I need to work a bit harder on next stage for me would be to uh, to, to drill this out and um, and uh, and par the little bugger off uh, but this would get a second polish all over again when uh, when the uh, inserts in so uh, there we go I will pop away I uh, will be back in two and we are back in the room and yes as somebody kindly pointed out in chat if if they do get their way um, this may well be uh, Modjumed um, coming up shortly uh, so yeah Modjumed um, probably sponsored by Jurex going on on that last video um, and we will show you how to insert the new rubber as as Mark did earlier um, and uh, how to ream out for the uh, suppository type device that will go somewhere else um, I think we have well and truly got potential there uh, I'm gonna slip into a second ad break we'll pop back after this chin up guys It's hopefully not all that bad um, as I said earlier it is time to stand up together Liberty Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. back in the room once again um, on the, I'm not going to call this doom day um, but, but it certainly feels like it uh, but it is a day that, that probably will go down in in vaping history at some point um, it is the time as I said and and so many people will say that we do need to stand together we do need to stand up and I know a lot of people I mean me personally um, from, from my point of view, I, I don't feel that there's any, nobody's going to tell me I can't do that unless they make it illegal and this shed becomes a drug den, then you're not stopping me, mate. Um, simple as that. Um, it, this is my property, my place, and, and if I want to vape in it, screw you, basically. Um, you know, it, it will be available. You tell me that the man in, in China is going to turn around and say, um, actually, you know, sorry, we can't send stuff there because there's a ban. Are they bollocks? I mean, are, you know, they're not going to, are they? So I'm not going to. And and I'm sure there are a lot of people, the people that I feel for are the people that, that have been supplying me for years and years. They are the people that I feel for. Um, I'm quite happy that I'm at a point where I know what I can do. I can make everything I need in this shed um, without a shadow of a doubt. I, I can sustain myself from here. Um, for as long as I need to the people I feel for are the vendors and and the vendors you know they're, they're the people who you know I met many many years ago I started vaping four years ago and they are the people that the sort of 
brought me up and helped me and the forums it's almost like you know you, they're forcing a community underground if, if this goes as well because the vaping community is a massive community and it is it's such a helpful community i mean fair enough we we have our falling outs and you know i mean everybody wants to sit down with a bowl of popcorn at sometimes on on a forum um we all do but it you know it's entertaining it keeps us coming back and and all that sort of stuff but you know why kill that um why you know there should be blackmarket.com or something where we can all meet afterwards but uh, you know will it come to it we don't know are they going to bail out at some point and and find some reason not to are they just doing this because they like to piss people off um are they trying to dictate to us i don't know i'll tell you one man who does know and that man is dave dorm and uh, he's on his way back on a train to london i'm half hoping he knocks on that door uh, you know on the shed he knows where I live. So I'm, I'm you know, half open. He knocks on that, comes in at the end and says, yeah, as, as, you know, but I'm, he probably won't. Um, yes. With all that said, should we crack on? Um, let's get on with our little videos. So we have the potentiometer basically replaced here. So now I need to do some testing and find out whether this is all going to work. So I'm just going to quickly attach a twin battery holder to this so that's the negative pop through and quickly turn up the wire even easier. So, there you have it. Um, um, plug this in, it would help, wouldn't it? Truth time. Um, there, I'm not sure how well this is going to show. Let's move that light out of the way. You will be able to see it's in 6.2 volts at the moment. That's Apologies for the flickering, that's an effect of the camera. If I turn that, it goes all the way up to 7.8 at one extreme. And down as far as 1.2 volts. So this is going to work perfectly well with a 10k potentiometer. That appears to be the right kind that you want to be using. Perfectly fine control here. So that's fairly simple. Of course, you may not want to use something quite this large in a mod, as it could be quite ungainly, really. So, what you could use is something like this. These are also 10k potentiometers. And these are the little ones which come with a little control knob of their own so it's just a matter of popping that in and you can adjust it very easily and that'll pop through the casing on most devices and you'll see that the pin layout is different on this to this but it's all basically the same you've got either end and a sweep in the middle or in this layout you have your either end 
and your sweeper's at the opposite side, the one that's on its own. So as long as you remember that. So you just have, that's the way I've got it laid out here, you'd have a black wire on both of these and the red in the centre. And just connect it up either via a connector or directly onto the board. And it won't be a problem. And I'll just show this. Presently the way I've got it connected, turning it clockwise increases the voltage and any clockwise decreases the voltage. And if I just quickly pop that off and reconnect it the other way around. Now going clockwise decreases the voltage and anti-clockwise increases the voltage. So it gives you the option to have it set whatever way you prefer. Although obviously most people would prefer it the other way around with it going clockwise for increasing voltage. But it's entirely up to yourself. Well, that's the advantage of the connector. You, if you get the pins the wrong way around, it's easy enough to swap it back. And very easy to adjust to whatever you need. So this will go in a mod at some point. As soon as I can think of a case to go with it, this should make a nice mod. I'll be back next week with hopefully something to mod. You may well see this again next week. We'll see. Any one more thing whilst I remember, I was given a couple of these at the knees meet, which some of you may recognise as this very strangely shaped ego type battery. And I have taken one apart as you'll see here. Now I did that by very carefully with the Dremel cutting out the plastic window that's here. Cut along this line very carefully because you've got, you're very close to the battery on the inside and I wouldn't really advise doing it. And I uh, removed the connector from the top. So basically what I'm left with is a battery with two tiny LEDs connected to it and the one in the switch. I think you can see that it still works. And this battery is a 650 milliamp uh, 13450 battery, apparently. And what I'm after is any sensible suggestions as to what I can put it in. But I'm really out of ideas, so if you've got any ideas for a novelty device that this would be able to fit inside please let me know I think it could be fun I've got a couple to play with so we should be able to make something interesting out of them and like I say sensible suggestions only because I know what you will call this in chat and probably for very good reason so keep it clean Right, so the other thing that people were saying is how do you drill out for your inserts? Um, let me just bring up the, uh, the the drill to speed. I'm drilling out to start with with a, with a small sort of pilot hole bit. Now, I use this in pretty much steadying as I go realistically. Heat is a, a, a bugger as, as Graham was sort of saying with these. change out the drill bit I'll tell you what I bet Graham is wincing right now
crazy. Oh, but come on. Now, I'd love to be as technical as saying I've got a mark made, but I don't. taking the end bit off and effectively what we've got is our little tip so we've got a whole do 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 that will put the 510 you know ND jobby bit in I know we've done all this before but that is a very 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 quick polish I've got a little indentation there now that is from when I was cutting out the uh, the neck that will polish out on on the next bout um, but very very quick first sort of polish cut off and holy drill now I'll, I'll do as I did before and ream and root and all of that stuff out. But uh, this is this one when it's finished, this will be another one of the children in need tips. Um, lots more polishing and work on that one. But a lot of people were asking how I drill the owls and there we polish, so there we go. Ding dong doolies, everything but the, no, not going there. Right, back to me in studio. And there we go. And I really do have a suggestion for that battery mark that you had there. Um, that pretty much does look sort of like a medical device. Um, and I'm sure that if you do come up with something, you know, that that works with, um, it looks sort of, you could almost use that as something, was it blowing smoke out your ass? Um, that sort of thing. Um, I do apologize. My mood today, uh, it, it's been okay, um, but not the best. Um, and yeah, it, it's, as we said, it, it, it does, I'm just referring to chat and it most definitely looks like a butt plug. Now to me, that's medicinal. Um, and uh, if you had a, uh, you know, a, a Siam tank stuck on the top of that, that would definitely um, be medicinal. Um, and most MEPs could use that to blow smoke from their eyes. I'm pretty sure. Um, I've probably gone a little bit too far tonight, for which I do apologise, but passions have been running high. Um, we've tried to keep it a little bit light. I hope this worked in some way, shape or form. At some point, we do have to smile. Um, we can't let this be doom and gloom. Um, we can't literally you know don't let it get you down guys um it, the writing is is sort of on the wall but it could be washed off if you know what i mean there, there's there's nothing on there that is to say it is definitive it is a proper kick in the you know it's a kick in the nuts um but you know we've all sorry i know there are women in in here and probably women watching this on the replay kicking the nuts you can get up from you can get up from a kick in the nuts and, and you can kick someone back in the nuts twice as hard. And that is what we sort of have to do now. It is about everybody standing up, everybody standing up together. Um, a lot of people on, on the forums and stuff are, are, are sort of saying, you know, yeah, how do we do it? I, you know, the, the big thing is how do we make that big united stand? Where do we make that united stand and how do we get the impact? Now, the man I know who, who can uh, give us that information is Dave, um, who will be back hopefully on Thursday. Now, you've got to appreciate, guys, um, Dave has been under absolute extreme pressure. Um, and I've seen that from, from the inside of the team as to exactly what he's put into this, the effort, the energy and everything he's put into this. And um, that should be, you know, applauded in some way, shape or form. Um, 
I would hate to see Dave come back on Thursday and 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 be down. I'm sure he won't. I'm sure there'll be new fight. I'm sure you know it'll be fueled up. Um, it'll be ready to kick somebody back in the bollocks. Um, sorry, nuts. Um, so yeah, you know, this is what you're seeing today is is me. Um, it, it's not the the, the happy go lucky Gary Dibley that that sort of does the show every Monday night. Um, I can be pissed off anytime I want to, really. But you know, today is, has really pissed me off. I'm sure I've said that before. Um, but I believe that they're, they're, out of every negative, there is a positive. Um, that's the law of the land. The, the, every neg, there is a pause. And and Mark will tell you that with it, the law of the batteries. You know, with every negative, there's a positive. With every circuit, to complete the circuit, there's got to be a positive. And that's what we've got to think about today. Um, what is the positive that we can take out of this? How can we take it forward? And what can we do to take that forward? Um, I'm sorry this has been a bit of a different show. I, I don't know if, if you've enjoyed it. I, <laughs> I don't. I don't care. Um, it's been me. It's been me on a plate tonight, realistically, and um, hopefully at some point in the future you'll see it again. Um, but seriously, let's stand the hell up and, and get on with this thing. Um, I look forward to, to the guys coming back. I look forward to the stories. I look forward to the videos. Um, I look forward to the way that we are going to take this forward. Um, what I'm going to do, uh, Jerry Saxton, um, I believe, popped into into our, our chat um, earlier and he's the guy who's, who was behind the, the Black Balloons um, song. I'm going to play out the credits and, and then I'm going to play out that song and um, unfortunately that's me done for tonight. Um, I'm absolutely macaroonied. It's been a long old day. Um, keep your chin up guys. Seriously, there has got to be a way out of this. I don't believe that we are defeated yet. I really don't believe that. Um, I don't. I really don't. And I'm sure you don't. I'll tell you what, if, if we are defeated, party in my shed. Um, let's bring a litre of juice and just get vaping to hell. Um, right. With all that said again, good night. It's been emotional, and it has been emotional tonight. Um, I will catch you all um, next week on a Monday where we'll be back to normal. Um, vape on, guys. Tip with Gary Dibley.